Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about transport rides and see why they are quite good but not as great as you might expect. First I'm going to talk a bit about transport rides in general and after that I'm going to talk about each transport ride type in a bit more detail. I've been asked quite a lot to talk about transport rides so I thought I'd do one big video that contains everything I know about them. However, I may still miss things as I'm only human and I don't know everything. This happens every now and then and luckily there are always people in the comments that point out my mistakes and things that I have missed. For example, in my video about entertainers and security guards, I missed a few useful applications for entertainers and also made a mistake on how and when vandalism exactly occurs. I urge you all to read the comments on my videos that explain stuff, as these kinds of mistakes will be pointed out and if it's an important mistake I will likely pin the comment as well. I also want to thank the people that correct me for doing it in a kind and constructive way. I rarely see any kind of hostility in my comment sections which is fantastic. Anyway, back to transport rides. The main function of transport rides is to transport guests around the park, as the name would suggest. They don't go very fast, they don't have very high stats and they're generally quite large so they won't make a lot of money either. There's one big issue with this function though. And that is that guests don't see transport rides any different from other rides, except for one tiny thing which we will get to later. So many people have asked me if guests actually use transport rides for their intended purpose and I've seen even people outright claim that guests do. But sadly, they do not. Guests will ride transport rides, but not with the intent to go to a specific place. A roller coaster that goes around your park will probably have more riders than a transport ride, as it's more likely to have an intensity rating that a lot of guests prefer, and it's also faster if you use boosters. Transport rides do have quite some advantages though. They are generally quite cheap, especially the miniature railway which has a cost of only 17 euros per straight piece, compared to 27 for a wild mouse, 37 for a wooden coaster and a massive 60 for a twister coaster. The monorail is also quite cheap at 22 euros for a straight piece and its streamlined trains have the highest capacity of any train in the game by far with 70 guests in an 8 car train. I mentioned before that there is one way that guests do view transport rides differently from other rides. If a transport ride is free, a guest will always ride it no matter how unhappy it is or how much he wants to go home. This doesn't mean that all guests will always head for a free transport ride if you have one in your park, but it does mean that that free transport ride is always an option to them. This means that if part of your park is isolated from the rest, apart from a free transport ride between the two parts, the guests will eventually find their way back. However, it's still not a good idea to do this, as the guests can become quite unhappy before they decide to take the transport ride back. You could also use this to make a transport ride with three stations across the park that only have an entrance building, and one station near the entrance of the park that only has an exit building. Guests that want to leave and are far away from the park entrance and maybe can't find it, might take the transport ride to get to the park entrance that way. Another application of this might be keeping guests in your park for longer. If you build a lot of tiny transport rides in your park, guests might go on them instead of leaving your park and thus stay in your park for longer. I don't know how effective this is as I've never really tried it, but theoretically it should work. Because of the cheap cost, sometimes large capacity and their ability to make any guest ride them as long as they're free, Transport rides are quite useful and it's not a bad idea to build one in a large park to get your guests around. They might not use it to get places deliberately, but it will still disperse guests throughout your park and transport lost guests back to the entrance every now and then. Just like coasters, transport rides have stat requirements. All of them, except the lift, have a length requirement. The chairlift needs to be at least 150 meters long, the monorail and suspended monorail need to be at least 170 meters long and the miniature railway needs to be at least 200 meters long. If you miss this requirement, all your stats will be divided by 2. All of the transport rides also have a different kind of requirement that we have only seen so far on the go-karts, which is that if you have too much of the track underground, 
your excitement rating gets divided by 4. For the lift this is 5 eighths of the track or 62.5% and for the other transport rides is 4 eighths or 50%. So if more than half of the track of your monorail is underground, your excitement rating will be very low. Take a look at this example. The blue monorail has just under 50% underground and the red monorail has just over 50% underground. The blue monorail has a moderate excitement rating of 2.61 which isn't bad for a transport ride. But the red monorail has a very low excitement rating of 0.65 which is almost exactly 4 times as low. You might encounter this underground penalty fairly often as building your transport rides underground except for the stations is quite appealing and some scenarios like Southern Sands even have it as a pre-build. You shouldn't be discouraged by this though as like I said before you won't make much money from transport rides anyway so the excitement rating doesn't really matter. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into the individual ride types is how it is determined how many trains you get on the transport rides. For roller coasters you need to build a station that is big enough to accommodate all trains if you don't use block brakes. For almost all, if not all, other track rides it's a little different. For the other track rides, which obviously includes transport rides, the length of the track is what determines how many cars you get. This is very useful as on long transport rides you can get a lot of trains which means that the throughput won't be incredibly low. For example, this suspended monorail can have a maximum of 24 cars. This can be 24 trains of one car, 12 trains of two cars, 8 trains of three cars or 6 trains of four cars which is the maximum length for the suspended monorail trains. This doesn't have to all fit in the station. However, the station does need to be long enough to accommodate one single train, so you can't put long trains on a long track with a tiny station. This all doesn't apply to the lift and rides in shuttle mode as they can only have a single train since they go back and forth on the same track. Now it's time to talk about each type of transport ride in a bit more detail, starting with the lift. The lift is pretty much useless. It's different from all the other transport rides in that it transports guests only vertically and not horizontally. The thing is, guests don't care at all for the great view that you get from the viewing platform at the top of the lift. The best case is that they go back down immediately and the worst case is that they get stuck there for a bit and become a bit unhappier. The only situation that I see the lift being somewhat useful is a park with a steep cliff like Whispering Cliffs or Snyder Shores. However, a simple path will likely do the job better, so unless you're going for aesthetics, I recommend avoiding the lift. Because the lift is so different from the other transport rides, from now on I don't include the lift when I say something like the cheapest transport ride. The next transport ride is the suspended monorail. This one is quite decent, but it's still not all that great. It's the most expensive of all transport rides at 32 euros for a straight piece and it doesn't offer anything special in return. It has a moderate top speed of 22 km per hour and also a moderate maximum capacity of 32 guests per train. Since it's an inverted ride type, it also needs an extra unit of clearance which is another downside if you want to build it in a park that already has lots of rides and not a lot of space. All in all, this isn't a terrible transport ride like the lift is, but the next three all have something that makes them better. Up next is the chairlift. The chairlift doesn't reach the same throughput that the monorails and the miniature railway can have, but it does have a few great advantages. First off, it has a way higher support limit than the other transport rides, which makes it very useful for building over your entire park without it being in the way when you want to build new rides. The higher above the ground you build your track, the more expensive it is. This is still true for the chairlift, but because it's just cables and only supports when you make a turn or change the slope, the cost increases way less than it does for most other rides. Let's compare the miniature railway and the chairlift. On the ground the chairlift costs 32 euros, which is the same as the suspended monorail and almost twice as expensive as the railway. 21 meters above the ground, the railway already costs 59 euros for a straight piece. 
This is quite a big price increase, but it's not out of the ordinary. A lot of rides have a similar support cost. The cost of a straight chairlift piece, however, has only increased by 7 euros, from 32 to 39. This low support cost makes the chairlift very useful for just building straight over your park or going up mountains. The chairlift uses the same track to go back and forth, which also makes it a bit cheaper since you don't have to build a loop of track. In fact, the chairlift won't even work if you make it a continuous circuit. When you build a chairlift, don't forget to always set the speed to the maximum of 14 km per hour and the minimum wait time to 0 seconds. The higher speed means that it can handle more guests, which is always useful. With this extra speed though, often you will have a lot of cars waiting at the station, which is why we are also setting the wait time to 0 seconds. This will cause the cars to leave as soon as the guests are seated, leading to a much greater throughput. 14 km per hour still isn't very fast compared to the other transport rides, but one great advantage that the chairlift has is that it doesn't slow down when going uphill. All the other transport rides really go at a snail's pace if they need to go up, so that is another reason to use the chairlift in a situation like this one in the Sugarloaf Shore scenario. The fourth transport ride is the monorail. It's slightly more expensive than the miniature railway at 22 euros for a straight piece on the ground instead of 17, but it's still quite cheap and it has some really nice advantages over the other transport rides. The monorail has three different kinds of trains. The small and retro trains have a top speed of 22 km per hour and a maximum capacity of 24 guests per train with 4 guests per car. The small monorail cars are slightly smaller than the retro monorail cars, so they're slightly better. The real meat of the monorail is with the streamlined trains. They can be up to 8 cars long and have a capacity of 10 guests per car, except the first and the last car which have a capacity of 5. This means that the longest train can carry up to 70 guests at a time. On top, it is also a lot faster than all the other transport rides, with a top speed of 35 km per hour. If you need to transport a lot of guests around your park, this is definitely the way to go if you have it available. Like the suspended monorail and the miniature railway, it can't really go very high, so it's definitely not always better than the chain lift. But when you have the space to build it on the ground, it's definitely better in almost all situations. The last transport ride is the Miniature Railway, which has two different vehicles, the steam trains and the trams. The railway is quite slow with a top speed of 14 and 16 km per hour for the steam train and trams respectively. The capacity of the steam trains is quite decent with 6 cars per train, 6 guests per car for a total of 36 guests per train. The trams can only have up to 2 cars per train, but it does have a capacity of 10 guests per car for a total of 20 guests per train. However, the trams do not have a separate car that needs to pull all the other cars, which means that with the trams you actually have a higher capacity if the total train length is the same. On this track you can fit 20 tram cars for a total of 200 guests, or 24 steam train cars for a total of only 144 guests. With the trams, a train is also leaving the station more often, leading to shorter wait times. On top of that, it also has a slightly higher top speed, which means that the tram is just better than the steam train in pretty much all regards. The monorail, suspended monorail and the tram vehicles for the miniature railway also have an extra operating mode, which is shuttle mode. In this mode, a single train will go back and forth between stations, much like the lift. This is really not a good operating mode. It's extremely cheap to build, since you don't need to build a full loop of track, but the maximum throughput is incredibly low, making it not worth it. If you want to not build a loop of track, you should use a chairlift instead, if it's available. In OpenRST2, the steam trains also have shuttle mode available, which is a result of a difference in how rides are grouped, and this looks really silly. Since this doesn't really look right though, I did report it as a bug and it might or might not get changed in the future. If I were to rank the transport rides from worst to best, I would say that the lift is the worst, 
then the suspended monorail, then the railway, then the chairlift and at number 1 the monorail, assuming that it has the streamlined trains. It's just unmatched in the speed and capacity and I also really think that the trains look absolutely fantastic. And that is everything I have to say about transport rides. All in all they can be really useful, but they're not as great as they could have been and you can easily do without them. Let me know what you think about the different types of transport rides in the comments, I'd love to read your opinions on them. Before I go I have a little update about the schedule. You may have noticed that my video about entertainers and security guards was almost 2 days late and I also didn't upload this Monday. Now that university has started again I can't always keep up with my schedule of 2 videos a week on Monday and Friday. I will do my best but I can't guarantee it anymore, especially not when I'm making 15 minute long videos like this one. Last week everyone said that quality goes over quantity and that it's ok if I miss an upload here and then and I'm really glad that at least most of you think that way. And as always, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.